so welcome back to my kitchen guys so if you remember from the last video uh, we did some Jamaican fish curry and that came up really good with um, uh, J the Jamaican rice and peas so I got a lot of requests they wanted to see a little bit more in depth in how I actually prepared uh, the rice and peas once again because for many people um, they really like the coconut and the stickiness of the of my of the coconut um, from what they could see in the video so here we have two cups of rice um, I, I like to use fresh thyme in my um, in my recipe and I use half a cup of coconut milk and a full can of, of um, kidney beans Oh, I know a lot of people out there may not have the patience to cook red peas um, from scratch. So, and I sometimes I don't either, and I do like the taste of the can, except that um, I like to rinse and wash it quite a bit. So, I have a full can of um, red peas here, and um, well, kidney beans. That's what it's labeled on the can. But we call it red peas. And I'm just gonna make uh, a nice batch of um, of Jamaican rice and peas. Now I'm gonna swap out the water at the right time. I'll show you where I actually um, swap out the water and use mostly coconut milk. And that coconut milk is gonna really boil down into something really nice and creamy for the rice. And eventually um, it will become sticky and flaky. But the first thing we need to do is we need to wash our rice. It's very important to get that starchiness out. The only way that the rice will become nice and flaky, like um, most Caribbean people like it, is when you wash the rice thoroughly so that there's no kind of a white mist in that, in that water. It should be a nice clear water and you have to massage the rice. A lot of people don't wash the rice well enough to really get all that starchy gook out. So that will be the next step that we're going to look at right now. Yeah, so as I mentioned, one of the most important steps of preparing Jamaican rice and peas is that you got to wash your rice really good before you start. And that really helps you to get the real, get the real flaky um, texture of the rice. And as you can see, the water gets really, really murky. And that's all the starch, excess starch coming off of the rice from the packaging. You want to make sure that you just keep massaging, massaging that rice until that white murky um, cloud is almost completely gone from your two cups of, of white rice. And it's going to help it to cook a lot better too once you do it this way. Really gotta wash that rice off. Then you'll drain it. You can actually see all of that white murky cloud getting off. And that's what you want to get rid of when you're making your rice. You can see the water is really starting to clear out. You just keep doing this until the water becomes really, really clear. That's the only way that you're gonna get that nice sticky Jamaican flaky rice and peas that really absorbs the flavor of the, of the beans as well as the thyme. And you can see the water is getting clearer. It's time to wash it. But you'll be amazed how much starch is actually in the rice. It's just so important to wash the rice. It's sort of the equivalent to when Caribbean people clean their chicken. They put a few tablespoons of um, vinegar and, uh, and, and lime juice and get that chicken really soak it for a few hours to wash your chicken. You can really see the water is getting really clear now. The rice is getting really nice and clear. Maybe just one more time. And then we'll be ready to get started. 
but this is a really important part of making Jamaican rice and peas. You want to get that rice really nice and clean, and cool, so the water is completely almost clear. There you go. So the next step will be to boil. Start boiling. Alright guys, so here we are. We have our two cups of super pre-washed um, white rice. And then we're just gonna, um, I only added about two and a quarter cups of water because I still have to add my coconut milk. And that coconut milk, a half a can of that coconut milk, as you can see right here, this measures up to be a cup. So if you're gonna be cooking two cups of rice, you would need three cups of water because there's a cup and a half of water to every cup of rice. But we want to just boil off some of this water in prepping the rice, which will bring it down to two cups of water because I only added about two and a quarter of water in there. And then at the right time, we're going to add at the at the right time, we're going to add the time, no pun intended. But I like to add a lot of thyme because I love the taste of the spice of thyme, especially when it's the, the leaf thyme, not the, not the thyme that's grounded up. So once this gets to a boil, we're going to start to add our peas. And we have here a can of peas. So this is all the ingredients you really need to make a quick version of Jamaican rice and peas. Now, I know a lot of Jamaicans might say, well, Wade, you cannot use canned kidney beans. And I was like, yes, you can, if you want a fast version. So this is a good time to add the thyme so that once it's boiling, get that nice smell of the, the, the thyme in there. And then the smell of that thyme in the rice is just amazing. Thyme is a really healthy spice to add. So in about a minute, we're going to add our coconut milk just for the water. This one, I want a little bit of water to, to, to boil off a little bit. And once some of this water boils off, then we can go ahead and add that uh, coconut milk. And that coconut milk is going to boil down some more too into a nice creaminess. But the key to making really good Jamaican style rice and peas is coconut milk. Using a lot of thyme. I should have used some scallion, but I am more after the, the taste of the thyme in the rice because I love that taste. I love the, the taste of the thyme. It takes me back to when I was a kid, back in Helsha, eating, eating, um, jerk chicken and rice and peas on the beach and the rest of man comes by with the boiled peanuts so as you can see the coconut milk is really boiling down pretty well And you just have to keep stirring. Normally people will, once they turn the fire down, they'll walk away from the rice. But I like to keep stirring until I get that consistency of um, a lot of that water from the coconut milk boiling down. And I'm gonna still keep it on high for a while. And as the, as the peas kind of melts, melts into the rice, you can see the, 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 that kind of creaminess is starting to come about, kind of like a red, reddish and that's the coconut milk boiling down and eventually once I turn the heat down I'm just going to leave it 
And you have to keep stirring so it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pot because I don't like that too much. But the smell is amazing. You can smell the thyme, you can smell the spices, you can smell the peas in the rice coming out. You can smell the boiling down of the coconut milk. It's just really coming into a really nice right now. So this would be a good time to turn the heat down to about half. Not too much heat. Now is the coconut milk to kind of settle into the rice, but not to the point where it becomes too dry. And you're just going to keep stirring a little bit so that you can kind of help the rice out to evenly cook in a pot without sticking and losing a lot of the rice to the bottom of the pot. And that helps the thyme to kind of permeate through all of the, the whole dish. And then we're going to come back to this in a few minutes. And as you can see guys, it, the coconut milk is really starting to boil down quite a bit now. And it's going to get really, it's going to get a nice film. And the smell is amazing. The coconut milk with the peas boiling down. But eventually, that, a lot of that juice is going to boil off. And we're going to have a really dish, delicious uh, coconut uh, Jamaican style rice and peas. And the coconut now is really starting to caramelize and the rice. You can see the outer film of that sugary starting. And that's when you know the coconut milk is actually starting to boil down into a real nice creaminess. Now, some of it may be sticky at the bottom, but that's okay. Because eventually all this is going to boil up and it's going to become flaky. really going to take on the take on the stickiness of the coconut it's going to take on the spices of the thyme taste of the thyme and a dish like this blends really really well with Jamaican jerk chicken uh, goes really well also with um, oxtail too but you can actually see that nice caramelized coconut um, starting to boil down on the outer edge of the rice and eventually all of the coconut will just be, milk will be boiled down. All right guys, so the rice is coming around pretty good. I'm starting to, I like to stir it from the side, get that nice flakiness going. Eventually it's gonna, it's a little creamy still, but that's fine. But the taste is there from all the time. smells so amazing. And I just leave the leave the um, the time in there all the way until the end so that the rice soaks up as much time as possible. The smell is amazing. Eventually the rice is going to become a lot more thicker and flaky. Alright guys, so it's pretty much pretty much done and it tastes amazing. It did come out a little sticky but that's fine. And I'm going to be serving it up with a little bit of um, jerk chicken. Um, with this jerk sauce, I pretty much mashed up, um, blended a, f a few scotch bonnet peppers. Um, you can use jalapeno peppers um, to make the sauce. And then I marinated it overnight with some black pepper, a little vinegar, um, garlic, and then put it in the oven.
so there we have uh, Jamaican jerk chicken and rice and peas with coconut milk and as it cools it will kind of dry out a little bit now some recipes will have you add scallions add more onion but for me I prefer just adding a lot of extra time and in this case I'm going to have it with um, some jerk chicken that I made up really quick with some jerk sauce um, but I left my chicken overnight and then I flame I um, oven broiled it I don't have a barbecue grill and um, but the flavors are definitely there and I really hope that you enjoy this um, it may not be as a hundred percent as some of the street food vendors in Ocho Rios or Montego Bay but if you live in the UK or United States or anywhere uh, you can get pretty much close to 80 to 85 percent of home so I hope you really enjoy this recipe and um, thank you for watching and um, you know do try it for yourself um, add a lot of time if you like the spice of time or less but definitely you're gonna need coconut milk and you can get it at from any any major store thank you so much for watching